morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. This is your host, Ahmad Tahimer, from another uh, AMA uh, for BNB uh, Chain Live. Today's title is the Innovative Mechanism and Community-Based Infrastructure for the Progression of Web3 Gaming. Uh, I'm accompanied today uh, by Howard, the co-founder of uh, Ancient 8, uh, Matthew, the Yield Manager of Big Time, and Denzel, the Head of Business Development for Tetsu. Hi, everyone. Hey, Ahmed. Hey, everyone. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us on. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here today. I think let's uh, kick this off, uh, get into it right away. Um, Howard, I will uh, start with you. Uh, Ancient Data is well known for being the largest uh, blockchain gaming guild in Vietnam. Uh, what's the next milestone for Ancient Date uh, for the next, let's say, 6 to 12 months? Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, we started in mid last year as the largest gaming guild. Uh, was the entire wave of blockchain gaming developing. Um, now we, you know, we, we strive to bring communities and players into Web3 games, help games to acquire users and uh, educate these users about what Web3 gaming is and guide them to the best games, you know, like Tatsumiko and Big Time that we partner with and, you know, uh, help them to onboard the next millions of users into the game and onto the blockchain. That's sort of our goal. Uh, and we've been building a couple different uh, Web3 software for that, uh, including the NFT and token launchpad Dojo that we recently launched, and Ancient Aid User Identity, um, which is a decentralized ID system for Web3 gaming uh, that focuses on gaming users. Um, and we have another you know, community engagement product that we're launching over the next few months. So stay tuned. Um, our, our entire goal is to you know, help the users to better navigate Web3 Gaming. And we have a couple more software that we're launching for that. Uh, thank you very much for shedding a line on that. And uh, I guess, by the way, I'm just going to keep asking uh, questions all around uh, in order to keep everybody engaged. Uh, and Denzel. Um, as Tatsumiko is developed from its original and very successful version of uh, Tatsudo.gg, what would you say that are the blockchain-empowered mechanics that improves the community experience from your perspective? Yeah, so maybe just to give a little background what Tatsumiko is to, I guess, some of the viewers who do not know what exactly we're building. So Tatsumiko is essentially like um, a fantasy MMORPG light that will be playable on Discord itself as well as web and mobile. So we started off as a Discord bot um, back in, I think, 2016. So back then, um, we just added some gamification tools to move people over to Discord. And since then, we've kind of grew. So yeah, just about over a year ago, we've actually had the vision to build Tatsumiko, which is an entire MMORPG that will be playable within Discord. And obviously, uh, we are here. So we will definitely have some sort of blockchain element in the game as a whole. So I would say that um, we have like two main use cases for blockchain for Tatsumiko. So one is to kind of benefit the players, the users, to give them ownership of, ownership of these assets that they kind of grind within the game itself. Because, you know, like people constantly spend hours and dollars in the game, but then once they leave, essentially they, you know, they won't benefit from it. They basically like lost like all the money or time spent that they spend in the game. So we want to be able to give them the ownership of these assets as well as the fact that, um, you know, in many games nowadays, you see people constantly trading within, um, outside on black markets and stuff like that. So for us, we with the use case of blockchain, we want to be able to have our own like marketplace in-house, because we feel that this would greatly benefit the players as a whole as well. So yeah, this kind of like all ties in together with our entire game, you know, even the fact that we're on a chat application like Discord, and with our various community focused features such as you know uh, community um how does uh, like community engagement within discord within the game um community dimensions as well so these all kind of ties in together to kind of improve the user experience of that sumiko so yeah that's kind of like what we are looking to build fair enough and uh, thank you very much for that uh, denzel uh, matt now to you um very quickly, uh, multiplayer action RPG has been a very helped category for famous titles such as Diablo, Genshin, uh, Impact, and how is Big Time aiming to evolve the immersive genre with Web3 technology? I think the main thing that we do differently from traditional Web2 games is you have more ownership over your in-game assets. So similar to what has been said already by Denzel and Howard is you own your stuff. 
and you did, can't really do that inside of Web2 games. Um, that's what the blockchain kind of enables you to do. So by bringing that to an immersive, good, uh, high quality game like we're doing with Big Time, we think a lot of people are going to like it and it's going to move the genre forward. Fair enough, and we hope to see uh, a lot more in the future as well. Uh, back to you, Howard, uh, and a very, uh, I would say this is interesting, at least from my perspective, uh, as a bridge between the community of Web3 gaming projects, what's the infrastructure layers that Ancient Eight has been building for the progression of Web3 gaming? Um, in other terms, what do you see missing in the picture that you're trying to develop? Yeah, for sure. Uh, maybe it's worth to go over a little bit of um, also um, explanation of the background of how we started this project uh, on that topic. Um, so I got into crypto in 2017. I'm co-founder at Engine 8 and my co-founder Zane, uh, he, start, he also got into crypto in 2017 and started the largest crypto media in Vietnam, uh, Coin68, that has um, about 5 million page views per month. Um, that's like the biggest channel for people in Vietnam to learn about crypto. And I, I, I believe it, you know, the, the adoption in crypto in Vietnam was so big, partly, you know, um, part, partly because of his, his ability to, you know, educate people about what blockchain is over these years. Uh, and for me, I got into crypto in 2017. Um, I built a, two other companies over the time and i was a crypto i was a i was a vc uh for internet uh SaaS companies and fintech companies as well as blockchain companies over for three years in in the meantime and i, I learned a lot about you know the different um, technology and is firmly believer that you know blockchain is going to be the next fastest growing subsector of tech uh, and and then we started HNA together because we think, you know, we are still so early in the development of Web3, um, of Web3, and, you know, there's only a couple million of active users of blockchain today, and there are so many people uh, in the world that can, you know, benefit from the from the technology of blockchain, and there are so many great products that will be built in blockchain over the next, you know, five to ten years. And we want to educate and bring on as many people as possible into blockchain, um, especially in the more developing countries. Um, as you know, some uh, as as we see, this might be one of the biggest opportunity for them to leapfrog the rest of the world and catch up to some of the developing or developed countries. Um, for Ancient Eight, you know, we're building a suite of tools and education material and research portal to help people understand more about blockchain through blockchain gaming, which is one of the most intuitive way for people to understand and learn something, right? We all grow up playing games and it's just fun. And as a really fun game that, you know, initially with Axie Infinity, you can also earn, you know, a sizable income for people in Southeast Asia. Um, we use we, we use this sort of we leverage this amazing sort of new invention crypto games to help these gamers and people in Southeast Asia um, that care about either the games a lot or the earnings a lot to learn more about the games and for the tools that we build it includes the NFT launchpad the HNA research portal which is the largest uh, blockchain gaming focused research portal uh, that's institutional grade report um, and um, we have the you know nft launchpad that's dojo um, that's you know solana first and multi-chain uh, and expanding to bnb chain um, the engine uid which is multiple chain on by bnb on solana on all the evm chain as well uh, and we're building an engine um community engagement product that's coming out soon. These tools will help the users get onto the blockchain um, and understand all the games that we, we've we done the expert research for and believe are strong part of uh, strong crypto games that you know people can enjoy. Um, so so that's, that's sort of what we're building. 
Fair enough, and uh, thank you for the uh, extended background as well. Matt, I'm actually going to start with you a little bit retrospectively with a background. I just didn't uh, think that any of our listeners need to know big time because they all do. Uh, however, uh, let's go very quickly as well. So big time has been around for about two and a half years. The founder of Decentraland left Decentraland and right around the start of the pandemic to start big time. And then really it was with the vision that the quality of Web3 games needed to, needed to move more in a AAA direction. And that's what we've, that's kind of been the overarching vision that we've had for the last two and a half years. Fast forward to April of this year, and that's when we did our early access of the game. And we've been in our alpha version since then. We'll probably have our global launch sometime in 2023 or so. But generally speaking, what we always focus on is making a high quality game experience above all else. And if we can do that, we think users will value the NFTs and the blockchain inside of it. And that will have us a much more stable economy and player base in the future. And we're really hoping and also uh, counting on all of you to see that that vision uh, comes through. Um, okay, the space NFT specifically is one of the core NFTs for the big time ecosystem in general uh, that shares similarities with current virtual in-game um, such as the central and sandbox. Could you tell us more information about the space NFT and what utilities makes it unique from other land assets in the Web3 gaming? Space from an aesthetic point of view looks like something you would see in the sims like a house or it looks like a castle and it's modular so buying space is like having another room to add into your overall area and it's modular so you can add it together so the more space you have the larger it can be and then within that area it has two purposes one it's a communal hangout area for your community so if you have a guild and you want them all to have your own private area you can do that similar to what you can do inside of the sandbox Additionally, you can also forge and upgrade your own NFTs that you find inside the game. So if you want to be able to craft a sword or a chess piece or something like that, you'll be able to do that. All of that takes place inside of your space. Thank you very much for the beautiful way you've actually uh, put it. And uh, Can you guys hear me? Okay, Howard, uh, what would be the values of the products uh, to offer Web3 gaming projects and the gaming community? And what stage do you develop these uh, projects? Yeah, for sure. When, um, when do you choose to start on them specifically with the current changes constantly and how we're building in the environment? Yeah, yeah. Um, so for the NFT on Token Launchpad, we already launched the first version and um, uh, user identity, which is a decentralized identity for, you know, curating the off game culture. So like for gamers when they're not in the game. Uh, so th there's a, you know, we, we have this space for them to hang out and for them to earn rewards and also, you know, engage with other players and bring their sort of uh, credential or past experience in the game across the different chains, across the different games and work with many of the BNB chain games on those. Um, the, these these products are already live, uh, and you know people can go to ancientate.gg and also log in with their uh, with with their wallet and create an identity on our website and start to explore our research portal and also our NFT and token launchpad dojo. Um, we are creating another community engagement product for you know games to use to onboard and manage their community members over the next six months um, and. We're, we're launching that one soon and it'll be multi-chain by nature uh, in the very beginning and super excited for, for that product to come out. You're launching multi-chain directly? Yeah. That's a good breather to know. Uh, Denzel, uh, if I may have your attention, most of the current games on Discord are very well known for being light and simple. How will Tutsumiku offer a breath of fresh air? Uh, what change would you be bringing to the immersive uh, gameplay ex uh, experience to the uh, gamers. Yeah, so yeah, I do think that it is true. Like due to like, um, I would say the past limitations of Discord, um, no one has ever tried or even believed that it's feasible to build like a large scale game. So thus, most of the games currently on there are all pretty simple or one dimensional, I would say. 
But obviously, with the growth of Discord as well, with them adding lots of new functions, um, we also kind of had a proof of concept within the Discord. So we do have like a pet system and a housing system that is playable right now with our Discord bot. So yeah, with that, as well as our experience in community building, we kind of went ahead and gave us, it kind of gave us confidence to build our vision of Tatsumiko, an entire MMORPG on Discord. So yeah, we do believe it will definitely be a breath of fresh air. So um, we hired like lots of top talents from like many different game studios. Like um, they've worked on games such as Sort of the Stars, you know, Final Fantasy, similar genre type of JMMORPG games to kind of create this sort of like community focused fantasy MMORPG. And then we believe it'll be like a breath of fresh air given the fact that it's not that one dimensional. Um, as with most MMORPGs, there'll be a little something for everyone to do. So there is like, for example, the immersive lore and the storyline within the game itself. There is like the idle well system that will be available. There will be the life skills as well. So for the people that enjoy the mini games, such as like fishing, farming, crafting, as well as like personal and community dimensions where players can kind of create their own content and build whatever they want within the Tatsumiko world as well in their own dimension or within your own Discord server, you can build together with your friends as a whole. So with all of these things set together, we believe it is definitely something new, um, something that is not exactly seen on Discord. And also with the fact that we are looking to be on um, web and mobile as well. So in a way, um, Discord will just be one client. So you can play, essentially play Tatsumiko across different clients. You can play on mobile, you can play on Discord on the very same day and all your progress will be saved. So we believe this is something new and it's not done and we are excited to kind of showcase with the world like what we are looking to build. I'm genuinely very excited to see a seamless uh, play uh, module at least. If everything is going to be synced across devices, that would be a great addition to the community. And staying on that point actually, uh, with the recent success of Reddit NFTs and attracted non-crypto users as a community first Web3 game, uh, what are the initiatives that Satsumiko plan to seamlessly onboard traditional gamers onto the ecosystem? If you're going to take it full circle, how are you going to get people from the beginning and keep them across devices? Yeah. Yeah. So first and foremost, we don't want to actively like force users or players to learn crypto. So we want them to pick it up on their own accord through like Tatsumiko. So there'll be, we'll be drip feeding them information on like um, when in different stages of like when it could be useful for them. So currently um, we have approximately 65 million people exposed to our um, Discord bot. And obviously, over like I would say 95% of our users are Web2 with no knowledge of crypto whatsoever. So we want to be able to include everybody to reach as many players as possible with Tatsumiko, which is why we're also free to play. So there are no NFTs or crypto needed to kind of play the Tatsumiko game. Essentially, it is like a plug and play. Just add the Tatsumiko bot into your Discord server and you're good to go. So as players kind of progress through the game, we will have certain like guides or items to kind of showcase and teach those players of what they can potentially do such as, for example, um, if they get like a rare or legendary weapon from like farming the dungeons, they can essentially mint them as NFTs and essentially own them as their own assets and trade them on the market. So by actually not forcing them to kind of learn crypto and instead drip feeding them and educating these players on the benefit of like these certain steps, which kind of uses blockchain, it kind of allows players to naturally discover and learn and understand the benefits of having blockchain within games. And this is kind of like our entire process of trying to slowly onboard players and allow them to slowly understand on their own the use case of blockchain, why it actually benefits them and doesn't like harm them as like most people have like a common concept of like crypto and gaming. So that is kind of like our plan in a way. Well, to be honest, I'm very happy to hear about the entire refined concept and uh, hope to see it in full effect soon. Uh, coming back to you, Matt, uh, currently Big Time is considered one of the most exciting Web3 games for both players and spectators at this stage. Uh, are you aiming to turn it into a pioneer Web3 esports game? Uh, is esports something in your future vision that you're looking at? And if it is, what's the team's plan for popularizing Big Time in esports? The game right now is PVE, so it doesn't lend itself as easily towards esports, but going towards a PvP format in the future is something we will definitely be doing, but it's going to happen after the global launch of the game. Having said that, our community has actually done a pretty innovative way of coming up with tournaments on their own, and they've been run by guilds, and it's been pretty exciting to watch. For example, we're in the middle of a tournament right now where a guild has put together a $15,000 prize for who can find the most NFTs over two eight-hour periods. So pretty exciting stuff and they came up with that all on their own um 
we're going to keep doing stuff like that. And if the community comes up with their own ways of getting competitive inside of big time, we're going to foster that. Esports are super important for us. And I think it's going to be continue to be a very important part of both our experience and then the Web3 gaming experience. Would you be able to give us any kind of a timeline? I know it's after the global launch next year, but uh, should we expect it within a timeline frame from the global launch? No, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't even be within probably like months of the global launch. I think it'd probably be like six months or so, if I if I had to guess. We've done some testing with PvP internally, but as with all things we've done at Big Time, we focus much more on quality than quantity of the content. So it just takes a long time to get the balance right, to make sure it's a good experience. We also want to do something that's uniquely big time. We don't want to just take some other game experience that's already out there. So I'm excited for what we'll be able to do in the future with that PVP. But unfortunately, it will probably be at least six months after that global launch. Fair enough. And uh, thank you very much for explaining that. Um, I want to say my questions in the core are finished, but uh, I want to give you all the stage for a moment to know what are the future projects that you're working on, what should we be expecting, what should the viewers be expecting, and after you guys uh, give us more information, we hope to get more uh, questions from the people that are listening live and uh, go through a few of them. Howard, uh, let's start with you. Uh, what should we expect from Ancient Aim soon? And it should be something very different than what you told me in the beginning. <laughs> you want something from different from the very beginning? <laughs> um, I think one thing if that... You have anything, if you don't have anything planned, we fully understand. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I think for, for us, you know, um, one thing we want to acknowledge also is right now is a very... Uh, sort of turbulent time of the crypto, uh, crypto, crypto environment, or also just global economy environment in general. And, you know, when, when there's, I'm based in the US, I think different people in different country might have different ideas or different state, but, um, you know, in, in this time, you know, I think games is one of the best sort of get away or escape or source of, you know, happiness for many people. Um, we're work, we, we will have, besides the product that we're had some building, these are bigger milestones, right? That we, we, we've already mentioned a couple of times. Um, these will be like, you know, generally three months, six months um, timeframe for building and shipping a product. We're very focused on building more products. We're also, you know, going to, um, launch a few new campaigns uh, as we engage the community through different types of esport tournament. We just did quite a lot of things with, you know, um, at League of Legends Worlds. Uh, I went to Worlds personally, and we run a couple campaign for people to bet on and also um, engage with, you know, the, the engage with the, the games um, in terms of just having fun within the community and um, have them, you know, watch the tournament that they were going to watch already but providing them with a space that they can you know also do it with other friends that are in crypto games and we might do something else with the world cup that's coming up um in collaboration with bnb chain um that you know help our community to have some fun with the with the world cup uh, world cup for soccer um and also you know predict make predictions as to you know who might be the winner for this this World Cup. Sure enough, and I believe we do have another AMA about the World Cup uh, activities, but we'll keep uh, that one for later. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Howard, Denzel. Um, what are the future plans that you guys are having? What are you most looking forward to? Yeah, um, it's kind of unfortunate to say, but we are still in production. So there isn't really anything major coming up for us, at least in the next couple of months. Because um, I'm I'm sure that most people know, like especially like Matt from Big Time, like it takes like years to kind of build out a great game. Like it's not like a, something that you can just throw money in and then it's like it's like done in a year. So currently we are still we have we have been building for like a couple of years now, or like at least a year or so. So currently we are looking to launch a playable alpha sometime around Q3 or Q4 of next year. That is like our target date. 
But in the meantime, I guess we are still mainly focused on building the game and the product itself. But of course, um, away from people... building, I wanted to ask if you had any community engagements uh, that are upcoming soon. I know you guys are still far away from launch, and you're yeah. definitely busy with developing now. But if you have any uh, upcoming community events or community initiatives that you are planning, we'd also love to hear about them. Yeah, for sure. So we do have an existing Discord bot. So within our Discord server, we constantly kind of run events because like we do have a large number of community members who are like constantly, you know, hanging around, you know, playing like our proof of concept in a way. So like our pet system and our housing system. So through some of these um, events that we constantly hold like once a week or twice a week, they can kind of earn like points and tokens to kind of like play and use within our Discord bot as a whole. So that's kind of what we have on a more consistent basis. I guess yeah besides that we like for we do have one i would say kind of like major physical event so we will be having like one our main theme song being played actually at the esplanade in singapore by the orchestra actually um due to our connections and stuff so yeah that's kind of like a cool event that we are inviting like um, some of our people who, who are in singapore who like would like to listen in and kind of enjoy the experience of like the orchestra playing like our music in a way so yeah, besides that, um, in terms of community engagement, like for the most part, yeah, that is kind of what we have. Like you can find most of the stuff within our Discord servers and if anyone is interested. Fair enough, and thank you for sharing that with us. The event actually seems interesting and I hope you guys will have the best success in it. Uh, Matt, if you'd like to add anything that you guys are adding in the future, besides me asking about esports. Yeah, well, the the i mean we do have that tournament that's going on this weekend and it really does kind of appeal directly towards new users any t to actually play in the game you need to have a totally new account so if you're interested by all means check out our social media posts on it it's being hosted by joystick so that's this weekend and then also this week we're going to have an exciting announcement um which 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 uh, for anybody who's kind of involved with big time should be pretty exciting for them so i know we've been discussing our economy details coming out soon that's also very important for people to to listen in if they're a fan of big time or have been involved with big time for a while. I think we're gonna have some exciting announcements there. Uh, this current tournament, as you said, has been organized directly by uh, Joystick. Do you guys think after seeing the results of this, you might uh, go in the same direction in the future? I think so. The we This is the third kind of tournament we've done and each one has gotten a little bit bigger. But the NFT collection part of it is, in my mind, pretty similar to the way it was described in Ready Player One and where they had to go out there and find items and complete quests. I think that's very appealing. Um, I, it seems to have gone pretty, really well so far. I like that format. But one of the cool parts about Web3 is how closely the game works with the community and almost leveraging ideas that are developed organically from the people playing the game. And so if people have newer, better ideas to add on top of it to iterate, then we'd be remiss if we didn't look at them as well. The NFT collection idea, to be honest, is quite slick. And I do understand the similarity between it and uh, Ready Player One. Um, with that, I want to thank you, everybody, uh, for your time today. Unfortunately, we don't have any questions from the uh, listeners. I've been your host, Ahmed uh, Tahimar. Uh, thank you, Denzel. Thank you, Matt. And thank you, Howard, once again today.